Hey guys, welcome to Surf Show and Tell. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review, the Peregrine by Channel Islands. The Peregrine is a signature model by Dane Reynolds and this is a custom board. What we have here today guys is a small wave high performance board. You guys know I like the Peregrine as a standard short board, but I wanted to try it as a high performance small wave board. So we went shorter, wider, and thicker. This custom board is 5'6", by 19 and 3 8 by 2 and 3 8 and the liters of volume is 27.3. This is a PU, and we had it done also in an EPS. So the EPS is epoxy. This board is super light. The epoxy is a bit more, more dense. It's gonna have better flotation, and it's gonna be um, lighter, it's gonna be quicker, it's gonna be snappier. So that's, at least that's how it felt under my feet, but we'll get into that later. But I just wanted to let you guys know, we have it in two different materials, exact same dimensions, and they both feel great, and I like them both. But let's get into the contours of this PU Peregrine that we have up on the rack right now. So let's look at the rocker on this board. We've got a medium nose rocker, which is gonna give us great paddle power and keep the board really fast down the line. We also have a staged rocker here in the middle, which is gonna help us get through flat, mushy sections. And then we've got a medium to an aggressive tail rocker, which is gonna keep the board really loose and it's gonna give us great tight turns in the pocket. So let's have a look at the concaves on this board. We've got a pretty aggressive single concave running all the way through the tail and then we're running into four pretty deep channels here. So with the deep channels and the concave, we know with the concave we're gonna get incredible lift and drive, and it's gonna be intensified by these four channels here. Now they start, uh, looks like about 12 inches in front of the fins, and they go to about an inch before the tail block, and that's where we're gonna increase speed, and that's why I was thinking, man, it'd be great to do this Peregrine as a small wave high performance board. I also liked how it transitioned from, from rail to rail and I could do my turns. They felt smooth and polished, all the while driving through turns and gaining speed. Okay, the other thing that makes this board really, really unique is the deck. It has a flat deck, which is gonna increase feel under your feet for flex, right? But what we have is when the deck's flat, it's gonna carry the volume all the way out to the edge of the rail so the rail is going to be filled really full. But because it feels full and they carry that foam out there, you can go an eighth of an inch thinner than what you normally ride. So at 5'6", that's a really short board for me. I would probably go two and a half to get my liters of volume what I want in thickness. But instead, I went two and three eighths. And that will hold my 27.3 liters and 170 pounds. So the next thing I wanna do is introduce you to Trace. Trace is a GPS unit that goes on the nose of your surfboard. I'll show you how it works. So you take this little unit here, you put it in, you line it up right here, and you just turn it and it locks itself in, right? And what it does is it pings a satellite, and it's, what it's doing is it's tracking, grabbing the analytics of how fast you're going on every wave if you do a turn, the degree of turn, it'll tell you how long the ride is, It'll tell you how many calories you're burning. If you get air or you get your tails out and the tail's free, it'll tell you how long it, they were free for or even how much, how much height you got. So it's a pretty awesome little unit. And they're about 199 new. Um, it took a little bit of getting used to for me just laying next to it because when you paddle, it's kind of like right there. But um, I never really felt it when I was surfing all. So I think they did a great job with the size and where you put it and everything. So that was great. So now that we have Trace, let's go into the data on the difference between the EPS and the PU. Let's start off with the weight. So the weight of the EPS 
came in at four and a half pounds without fins and the PU came in at six pounds. So we automatically know the facts are that epoxy boards are lighter. They're also stronger or a bit more durable and they also are more buoyant. I didn't notice much difference in the buoyancy so um, by feel, but I did notice how light the board was when I caught a wave. Well, what I did was I did 12 waves on this board and then I did 12 waves on the PU and then I, I would switch boards. But when I came in to switch, if I was switching from the EPS to the PU, I noticed that the PU was heavier. I noticed it under my feet right away. But one of the things that I, I really felt like was a struggle for me at times was when the offshores were blowing real hard, come off the bottom, go to the top, I could feel the wind try to blow the board off my feet. So it was a bit of a struggle at times. So it's not that one's better than the other for me. It's just that when, when I surf, when there's not a lot of wind, man, the, the EPS feels so good. It's really light, it's quick, and it's snappy. Okay, so we talked about 12 waves on this board and 12 waves on this board. What was I trying to figure out? Well, I put the fastest fins in that I, that I had, and what I wanted to know was which board was faster. And I took those 12 waves and did an average, and the EPS was faster than the PU by almost one mile an hour. So I thought that was pretty awesome, that I, and I couldn't have got that data without the trace. So let's get into the fins. Because we have trace, I didn't want to single out one set of fins, I wanted to try a bunch. So I went with the Futures ride number system. I think they're onto something really great here. Let me quickly explain it if you don't know about it. it has, they do a scale of one to 10, one being the most control and harnessing speed in their fins, and then 10 would be the most amount of flex with the most amount of speed, and the, I chose the F8. All the fins that I have here are largest, right? But the F8 is the highest on the ride number, and it's in the high nines. I think it's like a nine, six, nine, eight, 10 being the fastest fin. So we have middle, we have low end, we have high end, and then we have middle of the road, right? So this is a one to four, this is a four to seven on the ride number, and then we have a seven to 10 on the black stick. When would somebody use the black stick? This would be used on small waves where you're taking the flex from the fin and you're maximizing speed because the fin's flexing and then it's, re it's, re it's rebounding. And in the rebound and the flex, it's, it's, it's squirting with speed. You want that with small waves because you have to generate your own speed, right? So let's talk about middle of the range in the ride number. I chose the captain fin, it's called the CFL for large and the um, AM2 RTM. These are both a medium flex fin. They both have a foam core. So when the waves, whether the waves are smaller or bigger, but it's gonna flex less, so it's gonna feel more secure under my feet, but it's still gonna have that juice that I want when I come off the bottom or if I'm coming off the top. These fins are very, very good. They're very consistent. And the CF, the, this fin here is the one that Dane Reynolds was, was riding on the sampler. So I wanted to try it in the Peregrine because he created the board, right? So the last thing is the ride number, when would you use the, the ride number one through four? Well, this TechFlex fin is super light. It has a foam core, but it has a less of a flex pattern. So I'd ride this on a bigger wave. When the wave gets bigger, I want more surety because it's generating its own speed, the wave is. So when I, have, when I go down the line and I pick my spots where I wanna do my turns, I wanna have confidence under my feet that the board's not gonna slide out and my turns are gonna be true and consistent. So that's how the ride number works. Now, with the analytics from Trace, we took, I took each board out in one session, I'll go set, catch 10 waves on the PU and 10 on the EPS, and I found that this F8 black stick fin was faster than all the other fins. And let's say if I was, if I was surfing on an average of the 10 waves, the average was 21 miles an hour right so that's how i grabbed my data and then i had the middle of the range fin this came in at like 20.2 and this was somewhere about 19.8 to 20. so is the ride number holding true absolutely the flex felt great on all the fins and the fins were solid and i don't really have a favorite i picked the right fin for the right condition and i recommend you do the same about is the traction that I choose okay I'm a, I'm I'm maybe it's an old school but I love 
the traction that um, Channel Islands makes with the arch bars. So the Jordy pad's my favorite. It has the, um, the dual groove technology, so it's kind of grooving two separate ways and not all the traction that CI has, make it, they don't make every pad the same. I believe that's something that Jordy likes a bunch. So um, I love that, it has a good amount of kick and I can feel the arch bar under my feet. So if you guys are arch, if you like arches, the Jordy pad's the one. So the last cool thing I wanted to show you guys were the, like, this, this dry bag Channel Island's making. It's such a cool bag. It's, it's literally dry. Dry bag inside, put your wet wetsuits. This thing's huge. This duffel bag will carry three or four wet wetsuits with my towel and everything, but you can change inside of it. And you just leave the wetsuit inside, and if you rinse yourself um, like a little hot shower afterwards, you're also rinsing your wetsuit as you're changing. But they make it in a couple different forms. So you have, this one has a one strap over the shoulder, which I like a lot. And for those of you that already have a cool backpack, and you don't think you need a new one, you can just get the dry bag part and you can put your wet wetsuit inside and then you can um, keep yourself dry. I, this thing's no joke. Just thought we'd put it to the test real fast. So I put a bunch of water inside. You can tell it's completely dry. No water at all. Then you take it here at the top like this. You fold it up. Then you just buckle this here and you shove it in your bag. Perfect, right? Still no water. This thing's amazing, guys. Hey, the last thing, check this out. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but this is a Dane Reynolds model. This is the Dane Reynolds Dry Runner um, Day Bag. It's super light. Protect your boards. <clears throat> I mean, if you're going to spend all the money on the boards, you might as well protect it. Well, that's my review, guys. Hey, but what's better than this is that you guys subscribe. If you like the channel, I can, you guys can reach out to me, ask, ask questions. I'll answer your questions the best I can. And we're going to do free giveaways. So subscribe if you like the show. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.